Hey everybody, welcome back to my studio and the first video in 2019. A new year ushers in a new look. And so I've gone back to being a dark brown, but this hair color conceals a surprise. Oh, I decided instead of coloring the top, I would color the bottom and see how much I like that. Today I want to talk about setting goals. I've seen a lot of YouTubers posting videos, videos on looking back at their channel throughout the year. I did one myself, I'll put a link to that one at the end of this video so you can check it out. Videos talking about their goals, resolutions, things they want to change in this new year. And I have some things that I'm setting myself as a goal for 2019, but before I get into talking about that, I'm gonna have a little discussion with you guys. So I'll say my part, you say your part in the comments. Let's chat about it. New Year's resolutions. Are you for them or against them? My point of view, pros versus cons. Pros, they can be really motivating, help you focus on something that you wanted to take on, a challenge you wanted to tackle, a new skill you wanted to learn. Setting yourself a goal like that is an awesome thing to do. The thing that I think makes a goal good is a time frame. A clear beginning and end. That way if it's challenging or hard, you can see the finish line, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and you can hopefully push through and make it. For me, that big finish line goal would be Inktober. Every year, I love starting it, but finishing it can just about kill me off. So giving myself not a generic, I'm going to lose weight this year, but something that I can physically check off. I'm gonna climb my staircase 10 times every day. I'm gonna walk a mile every day something that's attainable. But if I give myself a goal that's just kind of, I'm going to do this more, how much more? And then what steps am I going to take to achieve that goal? So that's kind of the cons. If I set myself a goal that doesn't have parameters, it can fail. But then again, if I set too many parameters, it can take the joy and fun out of doing whatever it is I'm doing. So in 2018, my goal was to create a picture based on a gemstone and the flower of the gemstone every single month. Pretty easy, except I put two extra parameters. I had a certain grid size of paper that I wanted and an art style. And while it gives a nice series set to all of them and I was able to finish them and I enjoyed doing them, those two extra parameters were super close to being too limiting. As an artist, I love the freedom of expressing myself and trying new things, not the drudgery of going, oh, I've got to create another Art Nouveau piece, which is horrible because I love that style. I think it is so pretty that I don't want to ever do something that takes the fun out of that. Kind of like if you work at Disneyland. I've never worked at Disneyland myself, but I would think that working there would take some of the magic and joy of Disneyland out of your life because you see it every day. You have to see it every day. Okay, so what's my goal for this year? I'm making a fun goal, but not setting a whole bunch of parameters around it. Every single month in 2019, I'm going to be producing a new sticker sheet. I love stickers. Why not make a challenge for something that I would enjoy creating just for myself, and then also be able to offer it for you guys if you want to partake in some of the stickers. At first, I was going to give myself a theme. And who knows, this sticker packs might have a lot of super cute things in them because, you know, I like super cute things. But, but I'm not limiting myself. So if I want to do something a little bit more serious or whatever, just I have to have an actual sticker pack that's exclusively just for that month. So each month's sticker pack is only going to be available during that month. After that month is over, I'll take them down from my store. Any leftover stock that I have of that stickers will just be sold at conventions. But what are some of the other goals that I have for myself in 2019? One of them is to keep my studio a little bit tidier. As an artist or creative person, you might understand the struggle. You have a beautiful cleaned working space, whether it's an actual dedicated room or building or a corner of your bedroom or corner of the couch, or maybe you just have a box of art supplies. Inevitably, it becomes a jumbled, chaotic mess, which is just part of the creative process but still it can make the creative process not so productive. So yeah, my goal is to try to keep the studio a little bit clean. Who knows? <laughs> 
follow me on my social media accounts, specifically Instagram, you will have seen a sneak peek of this a couple of days ago. But I received a lot of questions about how I make my stickers, what sticker paper I use. Right now, the sticker paper I'm using is from Online Labels, and I'll put the actual number right here so you can check that out. I will also leave a link at the end to a video where I talk all about the process of making stickers. It should answer all of your questions in there. As you probably have guessed, the theme for this sticker pack is cute marshmallows or sweet marshmallows. So I have a girl who's kind of marshmallowy. Her dress is kind of reminds me of that twisted marshmallow candy. I don't know if you have that in your country, but we have, I can find them at the Dollar Tree, but they're just these pink and green and white twisted marshmallows that you can eat. It's really cute. And I wanted to make her dress out of that. And then a ton of just cute little marshmallows. I love the mustache monocle marshmallow. He's probably my favorite. After I finished the actual art for the sticker pack, I began to design what the sticker sheet would look like. So this is the first design here. It has a large sticker of the girl and then has a collection of the marshmallows. So you have one large hot cocoa cup and one smaller one. You have all the same size marshmallows here and then slightly varying sizes here. So you get two sets of each for this. But after I printed this out and looked at it, I kind of saw some things I wanted to change. When you're creating your art products and you do a test print, don't be afraid of going the extra mile and steps and fixing things. This could be fine. If I would have just produced this, I don't think anyone would have cared or thought of anything different about it, but I thought, I want to make something a little bit more detailed because these are cute. Some of these stickers were a little bit big and I thought if I shrunk this down, I could add more stickers on this sheet because more is better, right? <laughs> so again, if you follow me on Instagram uh, and followed my stories, I did two mock-ups and had you guys vote on which one you liked the best. And we went with this little beauty. So on this pack, I still have the main girl. I have the two cups of hot chocolate, original designs, and then I have them all shrunk down a little bit smaller so that you get all the sets plus extra monocle mustache marshmallow and flaming marshmallow. Plus I did a cute one, them stacked up on each other. So I have these three marshmallows stacked up. So cute. After designing, printing, and cutting the stickers out and finalizing the design, I had to do the packaging, which I just put it on a little bit of a stiff paper backing just to protect the stickers, put it in a five by seven uh, sleeve, and then printed out this little cover piece that has my contact information on the back. Hopefully everything's spelled correctly. And then stapled it on either side. So again, these stickers are available right now on my Etsy shop just for the month of January in 2019. So if you're watching this in the future, 10 years from now, you won't find these stickers on my Etsy shop. Will you even find me on my Etsy shop? Will I even be here in 10 years? If you're watching this in 2019 of January, they are available. And for the first 10 orders is going to get a bonus. Bonus! If you're one of the first 10 orders, you might think, oh, I'm just getting a sticker pack, but no. Turn around and you get his cute little sticker flakes. Six little extra sticker flakes. You get a sticker flake of the tiny assortment plus an extra little stacking one right in the back there. Just for the first 10. Oh, my hair's falling down. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna get to work finishing packaging all of these up and get them ready to ship out to everybody. Before you guys move on to your next YouTube video, I have a question to ask you guys. In an upcoming video that I'm doing, I have to do a small animation for a flip book. So it's going to be traditional drawing in a little tiny sketchbook. And I need an idea of what to animate, something not super difficult. A flower blooming, a bird flying, a fish swimming. Give me your suggestions in the comment section below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel. If you are, do you have the notification bell rung? If you do, then you should get notifications every time I upload a new video. Let me know if you get those notifications. I'm curious. And if you're wanting some more art a la carte fun, you can definitely check out this video. I told you I would post that sticker making video right here so you can find out more about making stickers. Anyway, guys, have a great day. God bless you guys. We'll see you in another art video. Bye. Sick.